I better perfected my method of painting metal, especially when it comes to painting utility trailers. And if you follow along in this video, what you're going to find is you're going to be able to get a fantastic paint job, almost as good as if you actually painted it with a spray can or maybe even with an actual sprayer. It's absolutely fascinating how fantastic this paint job came out in the very end. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about actually mixing up the paint that you're using if you're going to be rolling the paint onto your, uh, your trailer. So I'm a big proponent of the Krylon Farm implement tape. This one happens to be a white uh, high gloss enamel one. Again, no association whatsoever to Krylon. They aren't paying me or anything. Uh, just happens I really like that type of paint. I have uh, these two empty cans you'll notice here. So I'm going to be placing this, uh, this one quart into this one gallon and straining it through this strainer first uh, prior to mixing in the actual acrylic. What I discovered the last time I, I painted the trailer uh, in one of my previous videos You'll notice I just uh, used a stir stick, stirred this up, mixed in the acrylic. But what happened is part of the acrylic actually kind of hardened into little balls and uh, made it a lot harder when I went to actually roll the paint onto the trailer. So I've come up with a little different method that I'm going to try this time because I wasn't sure if it was the acrylic or the paint itself. So what I'm going to do is I have a strainer that I'm going to use. It's, uh, it's for a one-gallon uh, can. So I'm going to take that quart using the strainer, strain it into this one gallon first. And then what I'm going to do, because I'm only going to paint that front uh, wall uh, portion of the, of the trailer like I did last week, and the door as well. So I wasted a lot of paint doing that. And so what I'm going to do this time around is I'm going to take and put a half a quart into this can and a half a quart into this can meaning rather than using two ounces of acrylic, I only need one ounce of acrylic for each one of those cans. But I'm only going to use a half a quart because I think that's all I'm really going to need for the front and for the door. And the reason for that is after like 14, 15 hours, uh, the acrylic uh, either hardens or kind of goes away, if you will, and the, the paint isn't the same as if you use it within a speci specified period of time. So that's something to keep in mind when you're using uh, these types of paint is, you know, you can't uh, paint today and then come back and use this paint again the following day, 24 hours later, because the texture of the paint is actually going to change and it's not going to be the same. Uh, it's much better if you use it like within about a two to three to four hour period. Uh, these are the rollers, uh, these same ones that I used last time, but here's what I found. I found that the smaller rollers, even though they're identical, uh, as far as the roller itself, these are a 6 inch and these are a 4 inch roller. The 4 inch roller is the ones that I would definitely recommend because when you're rolling it on, you can put more pressure onto the metal uh, between the roller and the metal that you're rolling it onto, and the texture of the paint comes out much smoother than if you try to use a slightly larger one. I understand that you can paint faster with the larger one, but you're going to come out better texture-wise using the smaller one because you'll be able to put more pressure on the roller as you're actually painting it. So I'm also, uh, I just stirred it up last time using a stick. This time I'm going to be using my rigid drill. Again, no association to rigid. They aren't paying me or anything. Uh, the reason I do it is because I can control the speed. I was actually going to use uh, a different type of drill, uh, but I decided to use this one because I figured this is probably what most people would actually have. So, again, this will be able to fit right in that can, and I'll be able to kind of control the speed while I'm mixing it. So even though I've strained it into here and then poured it into these two, when I mix in the acrylic, I'm going to go ahead and use this. And I'll film that so you can kind of see how that works. Okay, so something else that I did too, just so that I would know about where the halfway mark is on these, is I measured these off with a, uh, a tape measure. 
and I just took a sharpie because these are four and a half inches to the top of this one quarter can so I went down to two and a quarter and I marked inside the can itself and I made a little mark with a sharpie inside just so I would know about where you know uh, a half quart is on these because what I'm going to do is uh, take the paint from this one and pour back into these two now it's still going to be a little bit less because I'm straining it and there's going to be a little residual left in this one gallon can as well another suggestion would be as soon as you get done doing this clean out your one gallon can because again you can use it again uh, these these cans are really now super expensive when you go to buy these so uh, the more that you can conserve on the on the items that you're actually using as you progress uh, working on your trailers the better off you're going to be so I'm going to stir up this paint first and then clean off my stick because again they actually start have started charging for this type of stuff at Lowe's and what have you so I'm just going to put this over here for now I'm going to go ahead and open up this can stir this up a bit I'm going to go ahead and just pour this in here to strain it and you can definitely see the clumps in there I guess I will use my little stick again get everything I can out of here again paint is not cheap like I got about as much as I can out of that. So I've got these little clips. I'm going to just go ahead and take those off of here. Lift this up. Now make sure you're wearing some kind of gloves because again, you know, you're dealing with paint which is has solvents in it and stuff. And you don't want to get it on your hands. I'm just going to go ahead and try to get out as much of the good stuff as I can. So that looks pretty good. What I'm going to end up doing is just taking here, what I have in here, and putting it into these two cans here. half a quart. Now keep in mind it takes uh, two ounces for one quart, right? So what we're going to do is take one ounce and put it in here. The only difference is rather than just using a stir stick, we're going to use this. So let's go ahead and measure out our one ounce. That's the acrylic, that's one ounce. Go ahead and open up my can again. All right, so I'm gonna put this in and just slowly mix it. And this time, I'm just gonna pour this in super slow. I can tell you right now just by looking at this that that's it's just an unbelievable so much creamier mixture than if I had done this by hand all right so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out that looks plenty good enough and on top of that once I have that mixed up so that nothing dries up I'm gonna go ahead and put that top on right now and now I'm just gonna go ahead and take the time clean this off 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and cleaned that off. As you can see, not much to cleaning it. Only took me a few minutes. The other nice thing I like about this particular one is it comes with a small cap like this. And you can just put the cap on here. It stays on nice and tight. And then you can hang it up. So I got a place to hang it up. The other thing I want to talk about are the actual dishes that you use when rolling and the type of rollers. Uh, this one here is a 4 inch and this one is a 6 inch. They look a lot alike. One's just 2 inches longer. So we're using the 4 inch rollers so we want to make sure that we have the 4 inch uh, rolling handle to go with it. The other thing that's important actually, believe it or not, is the actual pan itself. Again, no association to Lowe's. Lowe's not paying me. Just happened to get these at Lowe's. What I found is when you put the paint in, you just want to put in enough in this little area here. So just fill it up about half ways. Don't fill it up all the way. Because you want to be able to roll it out on this nice level piece right here. And you'll notice that this one's level compared to this one. I actually did originally roll this on with the 6 inch one. And you'll see these bumps in here, right? And you think, well, that'd be pretty cool. You know, that'd be a way to get the, uh, the paint, you know, uh, to filter back down into the pan kind of thing. The problem being is that, again, that puts indentations on that little sponge, and you don't want that. You want it, the uh, paint to stay as smooth as you possibly can. So just put a small amount, kind of roll it around in here a little bit, roll it back and forth in this nice smooth area here. And you're going to have to take this sticker out, so I'm going to do that in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, re-roll the front and the door that I did last time around, uh, just to see how it actually turns out. Okay, so I just finished that up. Didn't want to re-bore you again with, you know, showing the uh, me actually painting that. But wow, I mean the difference that made in that thing is just, it's unbelievable now. I mean, <clears throat> the smoothness, the texture of that outside, I swear to you, you know, at least from this distance, you would definitely think that would spray it on. It now matches the color on the, uh, on the sides of the trailer as well. So at least now I know exactly what color that was. And uh, mixing that paint that way absolutely is the way to go. And uh, this took a half a quart to do this front side and I had barely enough left to finish up this door. So again, that came out really nice too. And like I say, I barely had enough to finish the door. But the texture on both the door and the front end, unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. You'd really believe that that was sprayed on there if you didn't know any better. So that is the only way to go. Huge savings, uh, I think through Amazon I brought one quart of that paint for around I want to say about forty dollars so and I still have a half a quart left so I could definitely get this other side over here because I've already done the door so I think with probably three quarts of paint I can paint the entire trailer now I don't have to because this was painted about two and a half years ago. I am going to touch up in some spots though. So now I've got that other half a quart. So I'm doing all the touch up, all the painting, everything, you know, with the acrylic. Now the acrylic cost about $14, I want to say. So you're still looking close to $50. But again, you know, three quarts of paint, uh, one little can of acrylic, and mixing it up the way I've been mixing it definitely is the way to go. Absolutely wonderful how that turned out. I hope you got something out of this today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that like button and please, please subscribe to my little YouTube channel. I hope that I inspired you so that you can inspire others because that's what life is all about. Helping people to learn so people can help themselves. This is the Beat Harvest Man. Signing off for today.